In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The introductory prayers of the Holy Father for his intentions and for the peace, the mission, and the unity of Christ's Church on earth, particularly in this week of prayer, this octave of prayer for the unity of Christians. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last thing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, for the grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As The first glorious mystery, the resurrection, we pray this mystery as at Mass for Regina Richmond, who is unwell at this time. We pray for all those on the sick list of our parish, for William, Margaret, Jean, Rosemary, Betty, Dee, Elizabeth, Anne-Marie, another Elizabeth, Kitty, Mary, John, Jill, Joan, Lavinia, Lyle, Tony, Patricia, Kevin, Father Giles, Gwilym, Mike, Dora, Kathy, Brother Howard, and for Thomas. We pray for all those known to each and every one of us in need of our prayers tonight. We pray for those who spent tonight in hospital, and for those doctors and nurses and all the ancillary staff who will be on duty during the dark hours of this cold night. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have the most need of thy mercy. We pray the second glorious mystery, the ascension of our Lord into heaven for the needs of the world, and we pray particularly this week for the people of the United States of America. We pray for all those to whom great authority and power has been given during this past week. We pray for a 
spirit of service and integrity in public life. And we pray for all those who find themselves in the position, who are called to the position where their decisions will affect millions of lives. Our Father, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Sinners now to the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now to the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now to the hour of our death. Amen. Our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have us in need of us. The <coughs> third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. We pray for the faithful departed. We pray for those who have died recently and for those soon to be laid to their rest. And among them for Roger, for Margaret, Michael, John, Father Mark, Irina, Lydia, Janina and for Rita. We pray for those whose anniversaries fall at or about this time and among them for Jack. And we pray for all departed family and friends, for those for whom it is our duty to remember before the altar of God, for those who showed us something of Christ's love and taught us something of his truth in their lives. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be 
glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have the most need of our mercy. We pray the fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption, for the emergency services of our country. We pray for the police, for the ambulance services. We pray for the fire and rescue services, for the environment agency, and for all those who have been working in the floods of the last few days. We pray for the people of Greater Manchester and of Wales whose lives have been affected by the weather in the last couple of days. We pray for our own villages. We pray for the 16 villages and hamlets of this parish. We pray for the communities where we live. We pray for our common life as God's people in this place. Our Father. this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil eye. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Sinners now and at the hour of our death, Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, Amen. God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our sinners now to the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now to the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have the most need of thy mercy. The final glorious mystery, the coronation of Our Lady and the glory of all the saints. We pray this mystery for one another and for ourselves, and for our own needs and intentions, our joys and our worries at Mass tonight. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Grace the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for 
grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we set up our sighs, mourning and weeping and despair of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, hath purchased for us the reward of eternal life. Grant us, we beseech thee, who meditate on the sacred mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that we may both imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, Grace the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, O God. We beseech thee, O Lord, for thy grace into our hearts, that as we know the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his passion and cross we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain with us all, but so may the souls of the faithful, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. In his presence are majesty and splendor, strength and honor in his holy place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you.
This Mass is offered for Regina Richmond, who is unwell at the moment. We come before the Lord to celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass for the living and for the dead. We commend ourselves, our families, our friends, and all those who have asked for our prayers to God, and we commend ourselves to the mercy of our Heavenly Father as we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord, Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the heights, Amen. and on earth peace to people of the will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord was addressed to Jonah. Up, he said, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach to them as I told you. Jonah set out and went to Nineveh in obedience to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a city great beyond compare. It took three days to cross it. Jonah went on into the city, making a day's journey. He preached in these words. Only 40 more days and Nineveh is going to be destroyed. And the people of Nineveh believed in God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least. God saw the efforts to renounce their evil behavior and God relented. He did not inflict on them the disaster which he had threatened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, Lord make, me make me know your ways. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. Lord, make me know your ways. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. In your love remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Lord, make me know your ways. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. Lord, make me know your ways. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, our time is growing short. Those who have wives should live as though they had none, and those who mourn should live as though they had nothing to mourn for. Those who are enjoying life should live as though they were nothing to laugh about. Those whose life is buying things should live as though they had nothing of their own. And those who have to deal with the world should not become engrossed in it. I say this because the world as we know it is passing away. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel 
according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. As he was walking along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net in a lake, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you into fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in their boat, men in their nets. He called them at once, and leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the men he employed, they went after him. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know whether you've noticed there's no real reason why you should have done, but there are the vast majority, I suspect, of theology departments in the universities of our country, theology in the good old days, 30 years and more, um, when some of us were at university, now have been rebranded. And very often you'll find them called religious studies faculties, or in some places, theology and religious studies. And I suspect there's a multitude of arguments behind that particular compromise. What's the difference between theology, the queen of the sciences, as the medievals would have it, and you weren't allowed to study theology until you had mastered all sorts of other things first, if you were at university in the Middle Ages, not least so very far away up the 4074, and religious studies, studying the phenomenon of religion. Well, I would suggest there is a not so subtle distinction. But be that as it may, we can still see the attraction, surely we can see the attraction, in studying religions. Any religion has all sorts of things to attract the human being's naturally inquisitive side. The supernatural. I don't know if you've looked on ABE books, for second-hand ghost stories. I promise you, they keep their value. If you want to invest your money, invest in early editions of M.R. James. They sell for a lot of money, whereas, of course, many novels will sell for absolutely nothing, plus the postage. There is, of course, the sense that they have a sacred literature. There's a body of teaching to engage the human mind. There are rituals, there are practices. One can talk ad infinitum about the minutiae of vestments and other things we see in architecture. Religions have given the world great triumphs of art and of music, which are subjects for study in their own right. And of course, all religions, at least in one form or another, give us an attempt, at least, to come to terms with that question which is as old as the hills, and which so often we want to try and put on one side. What is there after death? So perhaps we shouldn't be too surprised if there are many reasons why people might want to go and sign up for a religious studies faculty, or a course of three, four, seven, goodness knows how many years. But of course Christianity is not about a body of teaching. It's not about just a sacred text. It's not about art, music, archaeology, however wonderful all of those things are, and however much they raise our minds and our souls and our hearts to God, as they all do when we get it right. Because Christianity is about a person. It is about the second person of the Trinity who once lay in an animal's manger, who once walked on the quayside, 
of a Galilean lake and who looked for young men who'd gone to an ordinary day's work with the paraphernalia of fishing amongst all the others. He looked them in the eyes and said, follow me. For that is not so much what, but whom Christians follow. Now St Mark is absolutely insistent about all of this. And St Mark, of course, as we can see from our Mass sheet, puts the call of the four disciples in what we now call chapter one of his Gospel. Come, follow me, and I will make you into fishers of men. They don't go to find Jesus. Jesus comes to find them. And St Mark, who must have known them, who must have heard something of this from their own lips, doesn't give us any sort of explanation or speculation about why Jesus chose these four men and not four others. He doesn't try to put any sort of hack psychology into this story. He tells us fair and square that Jesus called them and without worrying about what happened next, they followed him. Their response is immediate. And of course, their response is going to be far-reaching. It's going to last for the rest of their lives. Until not least that point when St. Peter is crucified upside down, perfectly possibly. The obelisk that now stands in front of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, where some of us have very frequently placed our hands, where we've been on pilgrimage year in, year out. It may well have been that that obelisk was the last thing that St. Peter saw in this life. His response to that call so many years before led him to that point and of course led him to be the key bell at the gate of heaven. And so, if it's not a bad pun, we can truly talk about Andrew and Simon, nicknamed Peter, about James and John as being truly captivated. They have been captured, they have been caught. There they were amongst those fishing nets. The catchers have become caught before being turned by Jesus once again into catchers, this time of a different sort of haul. A haul that includes you and me. And this, of course, is where our first reading, this is where the story of Jonah comes in. For it was by being caught by the whale, by being caught by the big fish, whatever translation we use, it is only at that point that Jonah stops running from God. He has his life completely redirected to follow God's plan, and as the good folk of Nineveh could tell us, to preach a gospel of repentance. Our society, of course, gives us many choices, choices in superabundance, and I don't just mean when we're standing in the supermarket trying to decide between Goodness knows how many varieties of what is essentially the same thing. No, we have choices in so many areas of our lives. It is not old-fashioned, of course, to say that people are called, are called to take up all sorts of positions in life and in the world. Doubtless, Mr. Biden and doubtless Mr. Trump would take seriously, I hope would take seriously, that word call when you find yourself being one of the most powerful men on earth for however long that period may last. Some of you, not me, but I'm sure some people in this country will remember that broadcast that the Queen made on her 21st birthday to the Empire and to the Commonwealth and to the nation 
about her dedication to this call that she has received from God, a call that she is still living out so impressively seven decades later. Whatever our calling in life, what to do, whom to marry, which path to take when life's crossroads open up before us, we are all called to respond and to sustain our calling, but that calling will only be sustained in the power of him who calls us. We, quite simply, must take seriously the phrase, be converted and believe in the gospel as those fishermen heard so many centuries ago. Our response will undoubtedly be patchy from time to time. It will involve drifting away, losing of the way as St Peter knew only too well. But equally, we will stay within the reach, within the twitch upon the thread of which Chesterton wrote and put into the mouth of Father Brown, of the one who leads us still after he has caught and called us. The emphasis and how grateful we must be throughout our lives to God for this is that whilst we can quite rightly be described as searchers, what matters most is that God has sought us out. The lost may indeed truly be found. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Just before we say the creed, um, those of you who perhaps aren't um, often as a Saturday night mass, I think there are sufficiently few of us tonight. Um, we receive communion by coming forwards. If you could remove your face covering at the front of the pews here, receive Holy Communion, pop your face covering back on, and then make your way back to the pew. But if you could wait until the people in the pew in front of you have returned to their seat, and that way we keep the one-way system without bumping into each other. I think actually given the uh, temperature and the, uh, uh, the dark outside that's probably going to be safer in various ways than going through the car park as we sometimes do. We stand to proclaim the faith of the church. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands, for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church, accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray. And in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. This is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord, through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence for ever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down the Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify them through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
was praying this Mass over the internet, and I know it's a growing number, to pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in Holy Communion now, at least come spiritually into my heart. As if you have already come to me, I embrace you, and join myself wholly to you. Do not allow me to distance myself from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before I give the blessing, um, please take a sheet home with you. Um, it doesn't occur to me, ideally, take two, put one in your prayer book, um, because the lists of people for whom we have been asked to pray, um, it's very good that they are uh, getting longer and longer and longer. It's what the church is here for. Um, please take them home and use them. And um, please add the name Mary to the end of the list of those who are poorly at the moment. Um, talking about that, um, as you'll see, we heard during the week of the death of Rita Good and long-standing parishioners will remember the good family, I'm sure very much. Uh, Teresa had tales that she was telling me the other day of the time, in very early in Father Brighton's time, before the Christ the King was built, when there was essentially a tin hut at the, um, the junior house of the oratory in uh, South Stoke Road, and, um, and the, uh, the minibus that would pick people up to take them off to catechism. So very much um, a family whose life has been bound up with um, our parish until they moved away not so very long ago. Um, Rita's funeral mass will be at Sacred Heart Henley on Friday morning. Um, it is family only given the nature of uh, the times, um, but we will say mass for her at exactly the same time um, here in church. And um, there's a little note that, Rita, uh, that Teresa asked me to put in the newsletter, which I have popped in there, you can tell it by the different fount. Um, masses at the usual times all week. The one thing I have to say, um, the Woodcote Masses have had to move down here. Um, there's a rather scary looking um, uh, missing panel from the ceiling at Woodcote, uh, which was taken down, it didn't fall down, but it was taken down before it could fall down, and there'll be some remedial work uh, required before we can get back into uh, the church at Woodcote. Uh, safety first, as in most things at the moment. So the normal Woodcote masses, they will happen, but they'll happen here rather than um, at Christ the King. But apart from that, it's just the, the ordinary thing during the course of the week. Um, may I pray that it's a happy and a holy, and of course at this time it's completely right that we pray that it's a, a safe and healthy week for us all. God bless you. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Peter, 
St. John and St. James, pray for us.